This video is not designed for contractors. This video is designed for the homeowner so that when a contractor comes in and starts talking about what they're going to do, that they understand why they're doing it. Hey, Michael Church with Crawl Space Ninja. Today, we are going to look at a crawl space that I personally took a look at about seven months ago, made some recommendations on what to do. The homeowner chose not to, to hire us to do the work. And uh, we're gonna take a look because now they're calling us back to fix some of the problems. Stay tuned. They are now taking on standing water and the company that uh, did some work in here before, they didn't do anything to address the standing water. And, you know, I just want to say that may not have been the company's fault. I wasn't there whenever, you know, the company was proposing the work, but just keep in mind that the, the crawl space contractors are limited based on what you uh, hire us to do. So uh, we have decided to come back and they hired us to come back to fix some standing water issues. So one of the things I wanna point out when you're addressing standing water is start with the door. Okay, so this door right here, uh, before they had a fan right here uh, because they were ventilating the crawl space. So they took that, that fan off and sealed this up, which is great. But what they didn't do is they did not address the base of the door, okay? So water, you can't really see it, but the ground slopes towards the crawl space. They've got these blocks here that they're trying to use as a berm to keep the water from coming in. It's kind of effective, but if you're getting a lot of water, it may not be. So what happens is, is that water travels right underneath this little lip because this goes straight into the crawl space as you'll see when I open the door. It just goes straight into the crawl space. Now that is new plastic that was installed within the past six months and there's nothing to stop that water. So the first thing you want to do is build up a lip right here uh, and then make sure that you have to adjust the door size in order to do that. You can also see on the inside the water damage that's on this plywood right there, which is also telling me that this crawl space is taking on a lot of water. When I was here back in December, this wall was actually flooding and you can see that this wall is taking on water because of the, uh, the dirt, the mud and everything along this wall. They actually had some plywood planks that they had put as a lip from there to the ground. And I knew that water was getting in here, so I proposed that we take out the plywood. But again, uh, putting a piece of, of uh, concrete on top of plastic to hold it down, not really our recommendation for uh, handling a, a crawl space encapsulation project, but a couple things about this. The, first of all, they did not install any kind of French drain or sump pump or anything in here. And again, it could have been that they weren't asked to. You know, some people are limited by budget and different things like this. But one of the things you never want to do is you don't want to put the plastic down before the crawl space is fixed, right? So if you're taking on standing water, the plastic needs to be one of the last things that you install because now this plastic is ruined. I can see that whoever installed it may be watching our videos because this is a solid uh, non cat pee vapor barrier. So uh, anyway, so just look at all of this water and the leaf litter and all that stuff, especially right over here. There's actually standing water right there that has gotten on top of the plastic. And that could be from the door. It could be from further back behind me back here. Uh, but you got a lot of standing water that's on that plastic. And once it gets on top of the plastic, if it has no way to get out or off of the plastic, it's just gonna stay there until the dehumidifier dries it up. Now, what we do when we install a sump pump is we put a dranger drain in the lid of the sump pump. So if for some reason you take a flood from above, hits the vapor barrier, and then it still has a path to exit the crawl space without flooding the crawl space. As you can see, the wood behind me is uh, white, okay? I I'm gonna get into that in a minute. But whenever I was out here before, uh, and tested the wood moisture level uh, with our little, uh, our little general meter here, um, it was ranging at about 17% wood moisture. Now keep in mind, this is in December when I was out here. So the wood moisture level at that time should start to dry out because in the winter time, crawl spaces, open crawl spaces tend to dry out in Tennessee because the humidity lowers in the winter and then rises back up. Plus, normally they're running their heat 
and heat does help dry out a crawl space because the ducts are leaking warm air into the crawl space. But today, what I want to do is I want to see what the wood moisture level is today. So let's set our meter. And what are we at? We're still at 18%. So nothing that this company did is drying out the crawl space at all and certainly not, not drying out the wood. As a matter of fact, the paint that they used, I assume this is kills. This is one of those things that a lot of uh, professionals do to cover up or encapsulate the wood, but kills does not have a killing property, okay? You can maybe add uh, M1 mold control to the kills to do that. I don't know if they did that or not, but basically all this did was just seal uh, the wood, okay? So if there is mold behind it and it wasn't disinfected, it's still growing. Plus, the wood moisture content is high enough to where mold can still grow inside the wood. So you want to make sure. Now, see, the problem with this is I can't take it off. The only way to take this off is to grind it off. Our soda blaster, we've tried. Soda, soda blasting does not remove this paint off of the wood. So if mold does begin to grow uh, through the kills, then there's nothing we can do except treat the surface mold that's growing on top of the paint. <sighs> okay, I think I figured out why the wood moisture level is so high. And it's basically because the humidity is uh, still in the high 60s, okay? Uh, it's too high, it's too high. A uh, couple things, number one, uh, one of the things we're going to do is we're gonna properly seal the vents that the company did not seal, as they didn't seal the vents. So if there is a dehumidifier inside the crawl space and the vents aren't sealed, then you're just allowing or even inviting uh, hot, humid air into the crawl space faster because as the humidity lowers in the crawl space, the high humidity outside, remember, uh, wet air chases dry air. So as the high humidity outside is wanting to force its way into the crawl space, but here's the thing, there is a dehumidifier installed. It's sitting right over there and it's not running. It's The dehumidifier says it's got a reading of over 70%. My moisture meter says we're in the high 60s and yet it hasn't kicked on the whole time we've been down here. So make sure you install a really, really good dehumidifier. I've, that's an off-brand dehumidifier. I don't know too much about them, but we install the April Air dehumidifiers. So you wanna make sure that you have some kind of way to check these at least every six months and do the maintenance on them because they will build up zuglia and different things like that in the condensate pumps, which could cause them to stop working. Okay, so this is Robert. He's one of our team leads. How are you, Robert? Good, how about you? Good, good. All right, so tell, tell us again what we've been called out here to do. We've been called out here to do a, a full perimeter trench or water management system, install our own sump pump, and we're gonna seal up all the lower penetrations in the wall so no water intrusion is coming in. And you're also gonna take the condensate line from this dehumidifier and run it into our sump pump, is that correct? Yes, sir. The only problem is, as I mentioned before, this uh, dehu is not kicked on, so uh, if you could test it, and make sure it works or make sure it's even on, yes, sir. okay? And uh, do you see this kind of stuff a lot, Robert, where you, you've got competitors that do things and, and they don't necessarily do it correctly? Yeah, we come behind a lot of jobs that have been completed and we see a lot of uh, problems with them. Okay, okay. so uh, we're gonna install our water management, which is the hydroway, is that right? Yeah. We're gonna install the hydroway system, go into our uh, half horsepower Flowtech sump pump, and you're also sealing a couple of vents too. Why are you needing to seal the vents? Because they were not sealed up properly. Okay, so. Thanks, man. Yes, sir. Now go get to work. Thank you. <laughs> Who's that? Is that Chris? Yes, sir. All right. That's Chris. Chris hails from where I went to high school, right, Chris? Yes, sir. Oliver Springs, Tennessee, man. Any Oliver Springs people out there? Thanks. Thanks, guys. Uh, a couple things about installing vapor barrier. All right. Um, International Residential Building Code says that if a crawl space vent are open and you have open ventilation, open air from the outside and the inside, it is not required to uh, tape the seams and it is not required to attach uh, here. But as soon as you install the dehumidifier and seal the vents, the code changes, okay? And I don't know why I don't know why. You would have to ask the codes people, 
But once you install the dehumidifier, these seams are supposed to be overlapped a minimum of six inches and taped and brought at least six inches up the wall and fastened to the wall. So this crawl space is out of code, which is why whenever we're proposing work, we can be made to look like we're really expensive because we don't just throw down plastic uh, and just lay it down like this. Look, there's, there's a seam here, there's a seam here. It's not even going up. And you can see the uh, moisture here that has probably come out from underneath. Look at that, see? There's actually water right there. So the reason why you overlap and tape everything is two things. Number one, any moisture that can escape from underneath the plastic is going to make that dehumidifier run more than it should, okay? But secondly, if it's not overlapped and taped properly with a water management system installed, uh, you're going to percolate the water up in these seams and it's going to get on top of the plastic and make the dehumidifier run more. So you've got to make sure when you're hiring somebody that you understand. This video is not designed for contractors. This video is designed for the homeowner so that when a contractor comes in and starts talking about what they're going to do, that they understand why they're doing it. Okay. Now maybe they only paid them to do this. This is all they wanted. I don't know, but keep in mind that this is not to building code. This if you get a home inspector that knows building code would fail the home inspection, all of this would have to be ripped out and replaced. And guess what? It has to be ripped out and replaced anyway, eventually, because the water management system also needs it up the walls and mechanically attached in order for the water management system to work better. And the homeowner knows this because we've explained this to them, that this plastic is a temporary plastic, but eventually once we get the water management system installed, we're going to need to come back later and properly install the vapor barrier so that it makes the dehumidifier run less and it makes the water management system work better. This is the dehumidifier that they installed. And if you notice, there's not an outside condensate pump on this dehumidifier. And I fell for this many, many years ago. I'm thinking, man, if the pump was built into the dehumidifier, that would be so much easier, right? Well, the only problem is if the internal pump fails in a dehumidifier that has the pump inside of it, the whole dehumidifier needs to be repaired. Uh, they don't really like for you to go in there and repair or replace their pumps, okay? So you're without a dehumidifier. But typically, if something's going to fail on a dehumidifier, many times it'll be the pump. Okay, especially on these ones that have the internal built. So whenever we install the April air, normally we've got a pump sitting right here. If that pump goes out, I mean, it's going to flood the vapor barrier a little bit, but then all the homeowner has to do is call us and we swap out the, the pump without losing the drying capability of the DHU. This DHU is not working. I don't know if it's because of a pump failure or some other kind of failure, but whether it's the pump or something else, the entire DHU either needs to be replaced where if the pump itself failed, then all we'd have to do is swap out a pump. So when you're choosing your dehumidifier, we recommend that you choose the DHU and the pump. The other thing is if you have a gravity fed dehumidifier, which is what an April air is without the condensate pump, you can get it close enough maybe to the, if you have a sump pump, you can get it close enough to there and just let the water run into the sump pump and then the sump pump pumps the water out. I just said pump like 30 times, didn't I? <laughs> On the outside of this wall, they have a downspout and they did a downspout extension. So take a look at that first. Okay, so a lot of times people in a way to fix the flooding of the crawl space, they will extend the downspouts. And you can see this is a great idea. You should extend the downspouts to make sure this is a corner of the crawl space and you never want running water from the roof going in right here because all of this water will flood into this corner. This is a weak spot in the foundation where the block meets. So it is a good idea to extend downspouts, but even though they've extended the downspouts, we're, we're still taking on water on the inside of the crawl space. So don't be surprised if just extending the downspouts isn't enough after the crawl space starts to flood because of course once the water starts to go in the crawl space now all of the groundwater is going to make its way in as well but it's good to get this roof water off of the crawl space.
So that downspout extension, I don't know how long it's been there, but obviously it's uh, not really helping. And a lot, and, and again, I'm not saying don't do downspout extensions, but once your crawl space starts to flood, it, uh, it has some problems. But look at this. This is, this is after the plastic was put in with their brick method. Oh, I'm sorry, that's a cinder block with their cinder block method of installation. So as you can see, first of all, let me, let me just show you one thing. The vapor barrier, again, not mechanically attached, but even if it was only to there, they're taking on water all the way up here. See all the hydrostatic pressure all the way up here. So the plastic needs to be three to six inches from the sill plate when it's installed uh, because of hydrostatic pressure. This wall is actually adding to humidity. Okay, again, this needs to have vapor barrier over it to about right here, unless you're in, you know, Georgia or someplace where it needs to be a little lower. So that way, this wall doesn't make that dehumidifier, which by the way, isn't running, uh, run more. Okay, so the plastic has to be part of the water management and part of the humidity control. If you don't put it in properly, it just doesn't work. But look at the mud that's on top of the plastic. It is ridiculous that, that this thing was installed and they have a downspout extension, yet the thing is flooding so much that it's got mud on top of the plastic. And guess what else I found? Mold. Look up here. See this here? It's already starting to spot. Okay, here. And we'll get a close up of this in case the camera doesn't show it. But there's already fungal growth beginning to start on top of this paint. Probably because the wood moisture level is off the chart. We already know that the D that the humidity is off the chart. Twenty percent. It's not as high up there, but it certainly is here. 19, 20%, 18%. And then they didn't even seal the bottom of their, uh, of their install. They spray foamed around the edges, but not across the bottom. The, the best way to handle this kind of block is to take a piece of foam board and put across the bottom. Okay, so that way, See, I can like reach my hand down inside of the uh, block, okay? So if you take a piece of foam board and you go this way with it, and then you put this piece of foam board on top, it actually keeps the, the moisture from evaporating out this way, as well as keeps the, uh, the water or the, the humidity out from the outside. So this could have been done a little better too, which uh, I'm gonna have the guys make sure that they do that. So kills, if they use kills, is a stain block, right? The stain came through. How did that happen? One, two, three, four, five layers of plastic, and they still didn't overlap at six inches. Okay, so we're about ready to wrap up here. A couple things I wanted to, to go over uh, before we wrap up is number one, we understand it is not an inexpensive project many times to fix a crawl space. Unfortunately, the larger the crawl space, obviously, the more it could cost to fix it. And if you got structural problems and mold problems and all this other stuff plays into the budget. So what makes Crawl Space Ninja different in a lot of ways, other than our no haggle, no pressure pricing and all that sort of stuff, is that we, do, we can do things in stages, okay, to fit your budget. So, and the expertise of Crawl Space Ninja knows what stage to do it in and what phase to do it in. For example, as I mentioned before, plastic is typically the last thing because if you don't get everything else right, you've just got to take all the plastic out and redo it. So let's make sure that we get all the other things addressed first. And we can even leave your old plastic down there until you have the ability to do these things in stages. We also offer, you know, low monthly payment financing and things like that. And real quick, before we go any further, I want to mention that we may have us a Columbus, Georgia franchise getting started really soon. So just want to let you know that could be coming. So if you're down in the Columbus, Georgia area, uh, make sure that you uh, keep an eye out for our Crawl Space Ninja franchise coming to you. And of course, 
We've got uh, Smyrna, Georgia covered as well, and that whole area around Smyrna, Georgia. But back to what I'm talking about. Two things I want to finish up with. Number one, do you see this hump right here? A lot of people want us to level out the crawl space, all right, to make it even. First of all, it, it doesn't really serve a purpose, except for maybe it makes it easier on you to uh, crawl in and out of. But what we found is that whenever people have leveled out a crawl space, especially if it's a pretty significant amount of dirt that they're moving from one place to another, they're actually could be creating a, a, a water intrusion problem because they've moved dirt that uh, and leveled it out. So just be careful if you decide to level out crawl spaces. And uh, so typically what we do is, is we would put the vapor barrier over just like this. Um, if there's really low spots or things like that, we can, we can certainly address those as needed. But the last thing that I wanna mention is that there is absolutely no insulation in this crawl space at all. I don't know if you guys caught that, but there's no insulation. So not only is the vapor barrier not done to code, the dehumidifier is not working, there's water intrusion everywhere, the vents aren't properly sealed, there's no insulation, no insulation at all in this crawl space. And I know the company they hired was less expensive than us, but now we're gonna have to redo all that money that was spent except for the mold, which we've already proven this wood is wet enough to grow mold because we can't soda blast this paint off, okay? And maybe they didn't use kills, but most of the time we find that that's what they will use is some kind of stain block. So anyway, my name is Michael Church and I am with Crawl Space Ninja, also Basement Ninja. So if you got a basement or a crawl space, I hope you'll let us come out and show you why we're different and I hope you make it a happy and blessed day and we'll see you later. Okay, so the last thing I wanna point out, I thought I was done, but I'm not. You see the condensate line that they've got coming out of the crawl space? Well, I mean, we don't have the coldest of climates, but it still does get pretty cold here. And since this wasn't put underground, uh, under the earth when they brought it out, this is just gonna freeze up in the winter time. So we're gonna redirect this line over to our sump pump once we get it installed. So make sure that the company, you uh, they put it under the deck and maybe the homeowner knew about it, but just in case, make sure you find out where your condensate and your sump pump lines are running. Make sure they're under the ground or they have some kind of ice guard or something like that to protect them from freezing. Thanks again, we'll see you later. Look, look what I found. It's a foam ball. Oh, here, Kayla. Sorry, I took your gloves. You think after doing yoga as long as I have, I'd be able to sit better. There we go. Is that better?